Kids, good afternoon. I want to talk to you today about my feelings on the 2016 election. Um, complicated. Very emotional. Very draining. Um, sad, funereal, um, destructive. Uh, those are the first words that come to my mind. Now, first of all, let me get this out of the way. I want to congratulate President-elect Trump on his victory. He won fair and square. He did a great job of doing what he needed to do to win. Now, there was an article this morning that just was like nails on a chalkboard to me, which was that he did this remarkable thing that's never been done before. And I take issue with that. Because how Donald Trump won is really, really simple. First, he took the two most powerful emotions that move people. They move mountains, literally. They can get people to move mountains. And those are fear and hate. He used those beautifully. And he built up this following of people that have deep-seated, that, that are very susceptible to fear and hate. Hillary does it, did it to a point, but she's not as good at it. Um, she did it, which is a sick thing, sadly. And I don't think, you know, I don't think you're great for doing that, Donald Trump. I totally disagree. We could have a higher-end conversation, but that's how you got the people out to vote for you, and that's how you got to win. And you also threw in greed. You planted a big garden of greed, and you watered it and cultivated it and fertilized it for months and months and months and months and months and months and months, and, months, and it grew. So between the greed and the hate and the fear, you got people to come out in huge numbers in just the right locations to get you elected president of the United States. Good for you. And I want to say good for you last night for giving a speech that wasn't mortifying. Your speech was not mortifying. And actually, I found the first redeeming quality of you last night. And that was this. When you finished your speech, you just said thank you and walked and started walking off the stage. We didn't have to hear, God bless you, and God bless this country, and God bless America, and God bless everything. Um, you know, God bless your dirty asshole. We, there was no God blessing. And it was so refreshing. Because it sounds so fake when politicians say it, because I know they don't mean it. And you weren't fake. That was the thing I loved about it. I finally got what some of your followers say about you. You just, what's on your mind? And I thought it was delicious because, first of all, the look on your vice president's face was just like you had just slammed him with a stone across his face. So multiple times. He was just horrified that you hadn't God blessed everything. And... That's great. Please don't do that. Please continue to just say thank you, have a nice day, go fuck yourself, or whatever. We don't need any God blessing of anything. We need things done. And you said you're going to get things done. So thank you for not God blessing, because every time I've heard God bless, it didn't get done. And the look on your vice president's face, who I detest, um, made me smile. It was the the one thing that made me smile, and a, a whole evening that just felt funereal, frankly. Um, <clears throat> now, I do have to say this. What disturbed me was the crowd. Your crowd has a tendency, and, and you, you've made this happen. You have instigated this. You have brought the level of conversation down from probably middle school, which is like the average American's intelligence and, the, and their communication skills, and you've lowered it to a really poor 
elementary school yard. A really bad elementary school yard in a really bad neighborhood with bad teachers. So the kids are just dumb as doornails. And they're simple. And they're mean. Because that's what kids are. They're fucking mean. Because I was a kid. I remember being fucking mean. I'm still kind of fucking mean. So, <clears throat> we've lowered the conversation where <clears throat> it's going to be okay to wear cunt t-shirts anywhere. Never in my lifetime has it been okay to go outside with a t-shirt that says cunt on it. That's why I wear my cunt t-shirt at home when I'm doing yard work or whatever. I don't mind the neighbors seeing it because I don't care what they think. But now I should feel free to wear it everywhere. I can't wait to try it out at the airport. See how that works. Uh, I hope that's the first law you pass is cunt t-shirts are okay. Grab them by the pussy is okay. All those other things, that those odious things that you've, that you've allowed are okay. Because I love to be horrible. No problem with me. I can speak nasty like no one's business. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm kind of looking forward to that for a little while. Um, hopefully at some point we'll raise the education level back out of elementary school play yard. Um, because that will get old kind of quick. But you didn't do it last night. You let people scream about lock, lock the bitch up, and somebody screamed about lynching Obama or hanging Obama or some crap like that, and you didn't address it. You didn't shut it down. Now, you told everybody that you wanted everybody to get along, but yet you allowed people to scream that crap in your presence without personally shutting it down. And now that you're the president-elect, you kind of need to personally shut it down each time, every time, all the time. Just my thought. Now, for the Democrats. I told you that Hillary was deeply flawed. I told you that we had a better chance with Bernie Sanders because A, he had better ideas. B, he has a clean record. C, he's an he was an independent, and so kind of an outsider. He wasn't part of the Democratic establishment. Because the Democratic Party and the GOP are both so toxic and disgusting, that's why Trump won. Because he said he was going to drain the swamp. And it is a swamp. It's disgusting. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, ugh. Donna Brazil, ugh. Hillary, you stole the election from Bernie Sanders. You and your little flunkies stole it. And then to slap to slap across the face even more, you took Debbie and you said, oh, well, I'm going to make her part of my campaign after she had to resign in shame. Do you know what a slap in the face that was? And then you wonder why the Democratic Party is torn apart. And Democrats can't even have civil conversations with each other. I've seen it. I've been in some. I watched it online. I watched it all during the pre-show. And if you even dig deeper, you tore apart the LGBT community within the Democratic Party because of the shit you said, the lies you told, and the fact that LGBT and disabled people are always on the bottom of your list. Now, I'm sure they're on the bottom of Donald Trump's list, too. We're on the bottom of everybody's list. But that's not doing you any favors. And some people just go, oh, well, you know, and they make excuses for you. And they did such a good job. Or they got online and got really vicious. And it come to find out, you paid lots and lots and lots of people to get online and get very vicious. How'd that work out for you? Not so well, apparently. Because you underperformed in places you shouldn't have underperformed. Because you were arrogant. And so were a lot of your surrogates arrogant. And your online disaster that you did on social media did you more harm than good. It has ripped the Democratic Party apart. Myself 
and I know thousands of other people are going to re-register as independents because I no longer want to be part of the Democratic Party. I certainly don't want to be a Republican. I gave up being a Republican back in 1992. Um, they left me. So I changed parties and I gave you all a shot. But you haven't really produced. The Republicans have just gotten more odious. But you guys make promises and then get nothing done. And some of the things you get done, kind of like my father said, the road to hell was paved with good intentions. Um, don't ask, don't tell, the three strikes you're out, all that kind of crap that we went through in the 90s. Now we have this like prison industrial complex that must be filled constantly by black males and Latino males and, and white crazy folks and the mentally ill. Because we closed all the mental ill, the, the mental hospitals, long-term mental hospitals back in the 80s. And no one, not you, not your husband, not Ronnie, not George, not Obama, not anyone decided to replace that with anything after all these years. So we use prisons as mental hospitals. Cute. Very cute. Now, Hillary, personally, I have to take you to task. I thought last night, when all those states were still going, and it was so close, and we all knew you were going to lose, the fact that you made a room full of people wait hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to hear you speak, whether to say, I lost, sorry folks, I'd let, you know, we screwed up or we didn't get there, fine. Or, congr you know, hey, congratulations, I'm the first woman president, yippee ya kaye motherfucker. Instead, you send out Podesta to tell people to just go home and you'll make a speech tomorrow. You'll talk about it. No, talk about it sometime tomorrow. And instead of talking about it with the world, what you did was you talked to your private staff in a private room. And you just happened to have cameras there. So it made the rest of the nation feel that voted for you. And there was a lot of people that voted for you. I still think you're winning the popular vote. You just kind of flipped them off and said, fuck you. That was classless. It was the most classless thing you've done. You ended your disastrous campaign on the most classless note ever. It was repulsive. I watched your, and I watched your speech today before I made the video. And it wasn't particularly gracious. It was full of dog whistles for, demo, for Hillary, Hillary bots and some, you know, hardcore Democrats that are still around. And you tried to even send dog whistles out to liberals um, to make this next four years as miserable as the Republicans made Obama's eight years. I don't blame you for that, but it was a little bit counterproductive because if you bitched about how Obama got treated and then you ask your people to do exactly the same thing, are you elevating the discussion? Are you being the bigger person? When they go low, are you really going high? If you think you went high in that speech, you're high. And if any of your followers think you went high in that speech, they're high. They're in denial. So where does that leave us now? Well, I got on social media and I went through and I've got several hundred friends like everybody else. Most of them I've never met. Most of them really aren't friends friends. They're just people that have, you know, either want to read my shit or I want to read their shit or we just happen to cross paths somehow and we never even talk. There's a lot of people I never even talk to on social media that are my friends. Um, some of them were actually friends in real life and we just don't talk anymore. And that's fine. That's social media. But it was haunting when I got on computer today. 
I saw people writing from last night and today, long, emotional things that they were actually feeling and thinking, which is so rare on social media because most of it's just a meme, a snarky remark, a wink, or whatever, and nobody ever gets real. Now, I love to get real. And, but I was seeing people that have never done that actually open up and express themselves. Sadly, what I saw was people expressing terror and pain and agony and fear and and disappointment and and just shatter just shattered emotions um over this whole election and then i saw some other ones which were just mean and spiteful and hateful and 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 ugly on both sides and then i saw of course um some arrogant poor losers people that support supported Trump, frankly, um, saying things like, finally we got it right, now we can get smart, blah, 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 blah. That's not the way it's going to go, kids. Sorry. Because there is no way you're going to sit and tell more than, ha more than half of America that they're stupid. It's just not going to work. That's just set, setting yourself up for Civil War too. And if we do get into Civil War, which I kind of think some, a lot of people want, it's going to not be so easy. It's not going to be the North versus the South, black and white. It's not going to be all that. It's going to be this very convoluted thing of people coming out of the woodwork from all walks of life, all ages, all colors, all locations, everything, and they're going to have foreign people coming in and, and mucking it up too, and it's going to be just this endless roiling disaster. So, Mr. Trump, I hope you fix that before that happens, because no one wins. And as I said weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago, on Election Day, no one will win. There is not one winner in this whole process. The American people did not win. Mr. Trump, you might be the president-elect, but you didn't win. You just got elected, but you didn't win. You've inherited a huge mess, a lot of which you, some of which you created. Some of which was already there. You just threw gasoline on the fire and made it a whole shitload worse. So, and you have Republicans and Democrats that hate you. Absolutely hate you. So there's no winning there. There's people, there's brilliant people that don't want to be part of your administration because they don't want to have to do anything with your name after the things that you've said and done over the last 16 months. So are we going to get the best and the brightest or are we going to get a clown car show? Because you promised us the best and the brightest, but if the best and the brightest are running for the hills as far away from you as possible, what you're going to be selling us is something a little bit less. That concerns me. Now, President Obama, I supported you. Love you. going to miss you terribly. And I felt your pain today with your speech. Because Donald Trump has been so horrible personally. I mean, it's not just professionally. He has personally attacked you for so many years, for your entire eight years as president. And tomorrow, you have to host the son of a bitch and then try to help him get started with something he has no fucking idea what he's going to do. He has less experience than you had. And you weren't the sharpest pencil in the box when it came to being president because you'd only been a senator. You learn quick and you're much smarter than he is and you're a much better speaker. Um, but you're going to have, you know, it's going to take every fiber of your being just not to deck the son of a bitch. 
seriously. And I wish you would, kind of. Secretly, I wish you'd just, just fucking knock him out. But I know you won't. you got more class than that. You've always shown that. So, now we have this transition of power. And kids, let me tell you, if you think last night was funereal and ugly and mean, and you thought the election was horrible, wait for the next few weeks. See how the Trump supporters act. See how the people that didn't support Trump act. See how much conflict begins. When you see a picture at dawn of the KKK standing on a bridge over a freeway in their little robes, celebrating your win, D Donald Trump, um, that sends a huge message that's a huge dog whistle, not only to your people, but it's a huge dog whistle to everyone else. And we don't want the KKK. That's why we got rid of it. And from the 60s until 2000, the media and everybody else worked to try to get people to be more inclusive. And people on the street, real people fought to be more inclusive. And as 2000 came, there was still some activism, but media stopped trying so hard. And now we have the, now we want to, to totally roll it back. We want to roll it back and just make everything conflict again. And when you ask for something, be careful what you ask for, because you'll get it. The universe hates a vacuum. So if you're at, it, it's like, even if you like say, oh, I pray, I don't want this, I don't want this. That's a negative prayer. But it's a prayer. You're going to get it. If you keep focusing on what you don't want, you're going to get it. Just like if you focus on what you do want. So everyone should probably kind of keep that in mind as we go along because it's going to be interesting. After probably hundreds of thousands of families have been ripped apart because of this election and tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of friendships have been destroyed because of this election and now people are highly suspicious of each other even friends or neighbors. Um, it's going to be difficult to dig ourselves out of this hole that we put ourselves in. And congratulations finally to the media. You set this thing up beautifully. You gave Donald Trump over three billion dollars worth of free advertising. Unprecedented in the history of of politics. Three billion dollars plus. So you wanted this dog and pony show that you set up by giving him all this free press and causing all this friction and ignoring certain people and and exploiting others and helping some dirty politicians steal an election so they could win, so that you could have this ultimate cage match between two deeply flawed and horribly unpopular people. And now you wanted media, as much as Donald Trump says that it's rigged and all this shit, the media wants Donald Trump as president because he brings ratings. People want to see the shit that comes out of his mouth and the things that he does and his hairdo and all and his tiny hands and all the other bullshit. So they're dying to say it and, and they're and they're rushing out. Oh, this is unprecedented. This is going to be, oh, my God, you know, hair on fire, everything, whatever you want to hear. Or this is going to be great. And look at this. Whatever's going to get them ratings, whoever watches that channel, they're going to they're going to tune in to Trump for the next four years and talk about nothing but every little thing he does. Either positively or negatively. But as long as you watch. 
and they'll they'll manufacture shit just to get you hysterical so you'll watch watch that because y'all got suckered the whole nation got suckered into this whole 2016 shit show that we called an election and the whole world's looking at us like we're fucking insane and we are because we let the media totally take control of our lives and then we sat and stopped listening to concepts and thoughts and instead just reacted to word salads of emotional emotional keywords that are well known in psychology to make people react. They don't have to even make sense. I talk to Trump people and I've talked to Hillary people and I've talked to third party people and I can't tell you how scary it is the level of ignorance about all the candidates. If you ask a Trump person a particular policy, not only, not only like, we're going to build a wall, okay, exactly how is that going to happen? Who's going to start it? What's it going to be constructed of? How much is it going to cost? How are we going to get Mexico to pay for it? All the details. It's nice to say we're going to build a wall, but if you don't have any details, it's not a policy. It's an emotional concept. It's a dream. It's not real. So when you ask somebody about Trump's policies, they don't have an answer because he's never given one. He hasn't had to. He's excellent at word salad. Hillary has policies. Does anybody really read them? Because I've talked to a lot of Hillary folks that really don't know what she wants to do or how she wants to get it done. They just want Hillary. It's just like the Trump people. Same thing with people voting for third parties. How many of you really got into the third party candidates and really looked at them seriously? For the good and the bad. Not too many. Because I asked a whole bunch of you about this policy, that policy, what about this, what about that? And I didn't get any answers. Maybe next time we should try a little harder. And then the fact that about 50%, maybe a little over 50% of people that are eligible to vote actually went out and voted screams apathy. And all these people that didn't vote, voted. Because they got a result by not participating. They might like it, they might not like it, they might not even care, they might not even know. I'm sure a year from now, there'll be some people that won't be able to tell you who the President of the United States is, or the Vice President of the United States. Because they just don't care. But they'll tell you what Beyonce wore yesterday, or some other stupid thing that's inconsequential. But in their life, that's the world. So, that's why I didn't type all this out. It's a long speech. But good luck, everyone. Because the shit sandwich is done. It's on the plate, and it's been served. Now, we got four years, four long years, to eat it. So, bon appetit.